One's the star of a popular sitcom, the other is a top sportscaster, both in trouble with the law, and tonight, they're celebrity mugshots. First, you're used to seeing Marv Albert announcing basketball games, not posing for Virginia police. The authorities releasing the shot of Albert from his arraignment yesterday. Albert's charged with forcible sodomy and assault on a woman for an alleged February incident at a hotel. He pleaded not guilty and has a September court date. And Tim Allen putting down his tools before this photo. He's charged with drunk driving after Michigan police clock him going 70 miles per hour in his Ferrari in a 40 mile per hour zone. The home improvement star reportedly appeared unsteady, smelled of alcohol and failed sobriety tests that included reciting the alphabet, counting backwards and standing on one leg. Singer Bob Dylan is hospitalized tonight suffering from a potentially fatal heart condition. Dylan's condition has been diagnosed as histoplasmosis. That's an infection that creates a swelling of the sac that is around the heart. According to officials at Columbia Records, the hospitalization has forced the cancellation of a planned European tour. Dylan is 56 years old. And we have the latest on the story we've reported on the Night Beat several times recently. The young Massachusetts girl who recently received a double lung transplant from her parents leaves the hospital today. Lindsay Diaz has this new shot at life because her parents donated the lower lobes of their lungs to her. Lindsay suffers from cystic fibrosis. She'll be recuperating at an apartment near the hospital. Wish her the best. Great news. Straight ahead on Eyewitness News tonight, it may just be the end of May, but we're talking UConn basketball. Joe has the details of a preseason tournament for the UConn men. That's coming up shortly in sports. Also ahead, a man gets back his best friend. After that best friend is found 60 miles out at sea. We'll explain the night beat coming right back. The night beat is back with more on the devastation that tornado victims in central Texas are dealing with. Take a look at Gerald, Texas. These scenes, typical, that right there, that is typical tornado damage. A piece of building wrapped around the poles due to the force of the twister. More scenes from Gerald as people pick through the wreckage trying to find just shreds of what was their life. Debris scattered all over the place. Nearly two dozen people still unaccounted for. Authorities saying the town looks like a war zone. And CBS correspondent Lee Cowan has spent the day in Jarrell. And Lee, a minute ago in your report, you said that there was just no place to hide. The National Weather Service yes. says in a tornado warning, you go to the basement. What's wrong with that advice in Jarrell? Well, in a lot of places, uh, they didn't have basements, for one thing. Uh, there are some areas where uh, you may have seen where there's just sort of concrete slabs, which is the foundation of those homes. Um, there's no place for those people to go, and that's all that was left of their homes. Um, one of the emergency officials here said when you've got winds of up to 200 miles an hour, even more than that at times, uh, even a basement is, is not going to hold up. I mean, things were literally sucked up out of the ground and taken away. And you talked about some of the typical storm damage where you see, you know, houses wrapped around uh, poles and people picking through the wreckage. In some places, the storm was so violent that there's not even really any debris. I mean, it's, it's like this storm came through and literally just swept, swept the house away, swept the timbers away, swept photographs, furniture, cars, everything, and scattered them miles and miles away. So where you would think there'd be a house, where you'd think there'd be wreckage, where you'd think there'd be a lot of wood, windows, things like that, there's nothing. Um, in, in that sense, a very atypical storm, I think. All right, Lee Cowan reporting live from uh, Central Texas, and uh, those images certainly will not leave anybody's mind anytime soon. Now then, Channel 3 will continue its coverage of the killer tornadoes in Texas as we update you on night beat weather. And we're starting with the latest indications of severe weather still striking that part of the country. And as you look at our maps, we uh, see that we've got in uh, western Texas, we've got tornado watches in effect for southwestern Texas. Down here, southwestern Texas, where tornado watches are in effect this evening. And these storms right here produce tornadoes just to the west of Lubbock. And these storms right in here produce tornadoes as they roll through eastern New Mexico down into southwest Texas. Now let's check three live weather net. And it uh, shows you where we are right now. And we're sitting very comfortably. Thank you very much. Temperature of 59 degrees at the Channel 3 New England Weather Service in downtown Hartford and across Connecticut. 54 degrees in Goshen. 59 degrees in Enfield, 55 in Stores, and right now, 58 in Milford. Considerably warmer now than it was this same time yesterday. Highs today across the Northeast, 60s 
and 70s, and in the mid-Atlantic states, 80s, and it looks like we'll warm up tomorrow to near 80 degrees. Our highs tomorrow well into the 70s, upper 70s in central Connecticut, and Friday will be in the 70s as well, not quite as warm as the weather system moves toward us with the threat of showers on uh, Friday night into the weekend. So here's your forecast in detail for tonight. We're calling for clear, calm, becoming cool overnight. Overnight lows in the 40s, but again, not as cold as it was last night. And for tomorrow, a mix of sunshine, high clouds, 75 to 80. And the five-day planner shows the uh, skies clouding up for Friday, chance of showers on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with readings in the 70s all this week. But notice tomorrow, nearly 80 degrees. That'll be great. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Hilton. All right, Nightbeat Sports coming right up. Let's turn to Joe and see what's up ahead. Well, we're talking Big Mo, those Mo Vaughn trade rumors. They're making headlines again. Red Sox management speaks out. Meanwhile, on the field, the Red Sox were busting out. This team has more streaks than oil on a windshield. Which way will they go? Plus, Tino the Mino, the Yanks' mighty Martinez, is treating opposing pitchers like Peter Carmanos at a Whalers booster club. Could the Yanks get back on track? You'll find out because... Nightbeat Sports is next. For local Red Sox fans, here's your sigh of relief. Mo won't go. Norwalk native and Sox superstar Mo Vaughn is not on the trading block. That's what general manager Dan Duquette told him today. Duquette said these rumors take on a life of their own. The Sox have taken on some form of a life lately. Tonight against Chicago, they were going for their fifth out of six. But Frank, Frank back, Thomas, other plans, his 11th of the year. Well, anything Frank can do, Albert tries to do better. Mr. Bell in the fourth. Goodbye. His 11th of the year. Chi-Town's up two zip thanks to Aaron Sealy's meatballs. But these Sox are just playing sound baseball. They tie it up in the fifth, and then Mike Stanley wins it. His RBI single makes the magic. Garcia Parra brag score. The Sox are hot. Five to three, your final. Aaron Seeley looked not bad after the homers. You could almost feel the heat of George Steinbrenner's blood boiling over the past week after a dismal one and six homestand. The Yankees ready to become road warriors at Toronto. Not a good start unless you got that red maple leaf on your head. Joe Carter was, and Joe Carter did. He says, David Wells, what you got? Three run shot, four zip Jays. No need to fear. Tino was near. Martinez. His amazing home run run continues. Then in the eighth, insurance time, Mark Witten takes out a policy in the form of an RBI single. Tino comes in, the Yanks break out. Six to four, Mariano Rivera save number 15. Those surging Mets finishing up at Montreal, and in the fourth, Carlos Baerga, he doubles, brings in two runs, and how about those Mets? Two zip Metsies on the mound. Bobby Jones becoming the beast of the East, rips the good stuff, one of his seven strikeouts, and in the fifth. We start with them, we'll finish with them. See ya, Carlos Baerga, Mets pull out the jackhammer and pound away. Seven zip your final Jones, nine wins. The Norwich Navigators beat Portland tonight, but that's the oh by the way storyline. It was Doc Gooden's third and supposed last double A outing. His rehab assignment record now stands at three and zero. Here's the numbers on his 94 pitch outing. Decent night. You see, he allowed the two home runs, five strikeouts, goes six innings, gets the W. Hartford's hockey future is in a holding pattern. The CDA will decide between the AHL or IHL early next week. This afternoon, I spoke with local sports owner Brian Foley, who feels it will come down to more than hockey. His IHL proposal will include NBA exhibition games at the Civic Center. Meanwhile, the word is Madison Square Garden's AHL proposal is garnishing some strong interest. Boston University at UConn. Hey, never too early to talk UConn hoop and college basketball. Preseason NIT is now set. Decent BU team coming off that NCAA year last year. And the NBA playoffs, Chicago. Looking to close out Miami right now. They're wrapping up the fourth quarter. Decent baseball night. Hit the Yankees back on the W side of yeah. things. Yeah, looks like they're doing all right. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. bad at all. <laughs> night beats coming right back. Finally tonight, a dock in Tampa becomes the scene of a reunion of a man and his lost dog. Eight-month-old Ginger was found 60 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico by a pair of shrimpers. 
How she got there is a mystery to her owner who lives on the other side of the state. While the two celebrated, it was a little tough on the man who rescued the dog. Yeah, I guess he had gotten a little attached to the dog, but had to give it back to its rightful owner. Understandably so. Cute little guy. Yeah. That'll do it for us here on the Night Beat. David Letterman's up next. Have a good night. Good night. Channel 3 Eyewitness News. This is Connecticut's news station.